going on everybody sam heine here back with another episode of street talk thanks for tuning in and i hope everybody's having a great week uh, i'm sitting here with a louisville legend today jk mcknight who is the uh, founder of forecastle festival mm-hmm. forecastle foundation and the founder of man of the land which is a new consulting firm that he is heading up and re- all, all three really inspiring to me for different reasons but there's this common thread that the three of them share um, I, I guess before we get started i wonder if you could just give us some background on what brought one of those things to the other and to the next thing sure and, uh, sure yeah. yeah i think everything was kind of a natural evolution of of, of what was done previous um you know so I think the inspiration for forecastle was nothing more than you know a, a platform to bring together community uh at a time when i, I kind of really needed it mm. um i'd been living um in south carolina and charleston and uh decided I wanted to do music my life and, and uh, you know came back I thought Louisville was a great place to do that for a whole number of reasons which proved to be true yeah. <laughs> um, not a bad me sound um, and um, yeah you know as it as it grew and, and kind of evolved you know I, I, I really wanted it to be more than just music you know from the very beginning and um, uh, it's not to say that music by itself was boring to me but I, I, I just felt that the camaraderie that exists between musicians and artists and, and activists is, is so strong and intermingled and you know you just you look throughout history and and you know you see it everywhere and in some of the biggest social causes and, and social movements of our time you know those three things were all there so I, I saw that in Louisville I mean Louisville to me has an incredible uh, music community an amazing visual arts uh, scene um, performing arts and, and everything else and you know it, it's a it's a close-knit group that in my head all belong together on the same platform and shouldn't be separated you know into different events and, and different groups because yeah. at the end of the day they're all you know they're all together you know after work and, and yeah. organizing themselves in different ways um, you know so that made a ton of sense and then you know is that scaled and kind of realized that that was something that you know more people than beyond my brain thought was uh you know a good idea and something worth pursuing um you know i I naturally started thinking about okay what's what's the next level of of impact beyond just hosting all of these organizations you know from all the midwest and the south and you know by 2008 i think there was over 60 65 groups that were coming in you know I mean the weight of that the gravity of that I feel like by that year almost 2008 was like that could have been its own conference and symposium in itself you know the activism side and it did it just you know with me and just a small handful of volunteers kind of working at the time um, you know and with everything on our plate it just it made sense to try to how do we take all that energy but then consolidate it around one cause what was the point do you think between then and now that you really realize like okay this is this is getting this is getting to be something big uh by 2009 uh, to, well 2005 and 2009 so 2005 we're in Cherokee Park you know and, and again uh, the festival was run by myself and a handful of Bartstown Road constituents, uh, <laughs> constituent, yeah, <laughs> colleagues, constituents. Uh, it really was. I mean, that was it. It was just like we had this gang, you know. We had this gang, and we were just like, you know, at night we just go around and put up flyers and posters yeah. and knocking on window, you know, just getting every, you know, all the support that we we could possibly get. Um, there wasn't, a, you know, any stone left unturned that on, in the Highlands. I mean, we we hit everything and hit it hard. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, to see that accumulate, and, and again, I think we did over 5,000 people. No one had ever done anything uh, to that size and scale. Um, so it was, it was pretty incredible uh, to see that. Um, it inspired me to think then, okay, well, we've climbed this mountain. There's that one, you know, way out there that's, you know, 12,000 feet. Yeah. Maybe we could get to the top of that. Right, right. You know, you get to the top of that, and... See another one that's 18. Like okay, I think I see a route up this wall. Right. You know that can get us there. Inch by inch. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of how it works. It's one foothold at a time. Yeah, that's really cool. 
you know, making that move, which we made in 2010, you know, was, was really amazing. And I think gave us a focus and a direction. Um, you know, let's, let's, you know, let's start internationally on, on, you know, where these hotspots are, are most often found, but then it, it became, it was made aware to me, um, a couple years later that, you know, Kentucky has its own version of hotspots, you know, yeah. of, of these critical life zones. You go to Eastern Kentucky, you go to Pine Mountain, you go to the Green River in Central Kentucky, you even go to, you know, Floyd's Fork and, and um, you know, th th these amazing um, places that we have here that, that we have to protect. And, you know, then the foundation, you know, naturally evolved into the space here and then started looking regionally last year at projects we can get involved in. And I jumped into a, a project in Florida um, and started contributing to that, the, the Apalachicola uh, Basin, which is one of the you know, oldest, richest reservoirs of, of um, crustaceans and, and shellfish in, in the oh, country cool. and, and trying to bring that back, you know, not just, not just for the birds and bees, but for, for mankind too, you know. It's, it's been a, a economy, a way of life that's now being taken away from those people. Um, you know, you want to see that carry on to, to future generations. Um, so that, you know, the activism part, you know, evolved I into that. And then uh, lastly, you know, my agency kind of came out of the idea that, you know, I'm, I've been able to take brands and, and corporations at a pretty high level and, you know, work with community nonprofits and, and create these amazing partnerships um, that really would, that kind of took an outsider's viewpoint to, to to do, you know, and, and having been someone who's created a business and a nonprofit, I knew how those, you know, those two intersect, yeah. you know, in a line, in a way that not a lot of people do. Um, and you know, obviously focusing on the experiential space, and you know, how do you how do you take all that incredible energy, you know, that's there at a festival, and um, and, and use it for something good? You know, I remember doing this deal with with Pabst Blue Ribbon about, you know, how do we you know, let, let's do something great. It's not going to focus on the product at all. It's just going to focus on on action and impact. So let's let's convert you know music festival fan passion into you know on-site recycling action. Yeah. You know, so we did. We you know we, we got music fans to you know spend all day you know picking up garbage. Wow. <laughs> you know, and we we rose you know, the festival rose to number two in the country in waste diversion and. Um, it did a similar program with the bourbon industry here called Bourbon Cares that combined bands with brands and uh, you know did single barrel selections that all benefited Forecastle Foundation and got the artists involved in it to you know serve the product to the fans and have these incredible engagements with them. Um, so you know doing that over years and years and years you know became you know pretty aware to me that this is something that that this is a model that could go well beyond the festival space, yeah. you know, but, but go into, into so many different industries and sectors. And uh, that's really what convinced me to, um, you know, kind of head out of the, uh, um, you know, the festival world and, and head more into um, social impact and yeah. entrepreneurship development training. Back in the day, whenever you had your first round in Tyler Park, there was just a few hundred people. And back at that point, do you think you'd ever believe that it would grow, I guess a couple things, grow to this point as a festival, but as an extension, grow into the foundation and, and the work you're doing now with Man of the Land. I mean, right. so, so many things that are making an impact. I think my, I remember my goal back then being like, oh, you know, it'd be great to get down to Waterfront Park. You know, I remember that, but I didn't, I didn't wasn't, you know, there wasn't this grand business plan or, yeah. um, you know, five year strategic, you know, strategy, you know, strategy canvas. Yeah they would say at Harvard Business School right <laughs> um, you know there wasn't yeah you know, there wasn't anything like that um, you know it was just like let's do this one year and let's see how it does and then let's pivot and tweak and tailor it to um, you know what, what it needs to be to be you know most impactful most optimized um, you know the best experience possible that it can it could be right um. What are what are just a couple of uh, things? You, you just I, I guess between 2002 and now, you know, you've seen so much growth, exponential growth, in, in the forecastle movement and the different things that you've introduced along the way. Mm -hmm. um, 
and it's very locally tied, although bigger than Louisville at this point, right. obviously. But what, what are a couple of things in, in Louisville that you noticed growing or changing or developing along the way? Yeah. That maybe yeah. Forecast will play a role in or, or maybe just as a byproduct? Well, I mean, one thing I, you know, I'm, I'm really impressed by is just is the Portland community, you yeah. know, and how that's growing and coming together. I, I moved to Portland um, when I was 20 years old. I think 20 years old, 21. Um, yeah, I moved when I moved back from Charleston. That was the that was, I was you know trying to find the most like you know, uh, what's a good way to put it. Um, a, wor- a trade work for rent kind of situation, uh, you know, so we could, I could work on music all day and not have to worry about, you know, being able to subsidize my income down to, you know, I think it was like less than $5,000 a year in my early 20s to try to be able to do music 100% of the time and not have to work yeah. uh, as much. So, um, but yeah, I lived down there and I absolutely loved it. Um, you know, we'd throw these massive parties down there, like all these East End kids would come down and um, you know, it's really, really amazing. I still have great memories. We, we, me and two buddies kind of lived in this, this like fight club house oh, cool. down there on yeah. 23rd and round. And it was super cool. But, you know, after that, I think it, that opened some doors. Cause I remember, um, you know, like Aaron Conway and, and, you know, people, they used to have this, this thing called lava house. That was amazing. That we used to, we used to go to and be part of, and, you know, um, you know, they they started doing some some shows and some things down there in this church, and um, then later, you know, Gil came down, and you know, I just think it, you get people down there and immersed yeah. in that, and um, you know, open some eyes and and things happen. So yeah, um, yeah, that was a wild time to, to to be there, but it was you know worked out. It's come a long way, just purely from from the buzz you know, yeah and uh i guess the businesses flocking down there yeah right yeah and it's so great and there was nothing and you used to drive through downtown at that time too and it was just nothing this is like yeah. pre fourth street live like nothing was downtown downtown was total dead zone yeah um and um and then you know you drive all the way down to i would drive down to 20 um yeah 21st street take a right and um you know it's just this is you know, little I, I I could, you know I could see back then what it what it could become. Yeah. You know, and I feel like I did a little part there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess back at that point, it's probably like an island because, like you said, downtown. I mean, it's come a long way since then too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. But it's just I, th- I think that's a a super inspiring uh, in the neighborhood surrounding. This is a super inspiring part of town just because like. You know, it used to be such a hub, and the architecture's so rich. Yeah. And, you know, it's it just tells a story. You know, yeah. Rolling down there. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a good way to put it. You know, it tells it tells a story. I mean, everything's everything's a story, and it's just a matter of you know distilling you know out you know what that story is. And Portland's just it's so there's so much history there. It's just it's so rich, and uh, the families that have been there um, for you know for generations and. Um, you know, we really got to know the neighborhood and, um, I don't know how much the neighborhood appreciated us at the time because we <laughs> yeah. were, you know, you were bringing 150, 250 kids down there, you know, probably without their parents' consent, probably. uh, <laughs> knowledge of what we were doing, but it was, um, it was fun. And that's how it always works. I mean, if you, you know, you plant a seed, you, you put a stake in the ground, you know, um, it, it's always, um. You know, as an entrepreneur, you never, you never fully see the the grand picture of what that becomes. Um, but you know, there's people that come to me all the time and are like, you know, I moved here from Chicago and bought that building, you know, on Main Street after going to your festival in 2016. And you know, um, there's stories like that all the time. You don't realize how big of an economic driver, um, you know, these cultural events are until you start seeing, you know people make those investments yeah you know? absolutely well it's inspiring what you're doing man from the from the from the start to where you are right now it seems like you're you're staying true to the original vision and you're doing a lot of really cool things around around louisville but around around the world i mean it's it, it's sort of this cool ripple effect and it's cool to watch it play out so yeah yeah i appreciate you uh appreciate you coming on sure so, yeah, thanks man. for having me yeah absolutely well, jk mcknight folks and uh thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next week